Hello world, welcome to the 14th video in my Python for Finance playlist. In previous videos in this playlist, uh, we use matplotlib uh, and a web driver to automate some financial data visualization. So let's check out what that looks like uh, with matplotlib. And so you can watch the video by clicking here to see how I set it up initially and then watch future videos to uh, how I expanded it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to run this program and it's going to automatically pull data um, from various sources like the S&P 500, the Russell 2000. It's going to get the yield curve, right? U.S. Treasury yields. And it's also going to get Bitcoin processes. So it says my files have downloaded. Okay. And so now what we have, and let me move my face is this um, graph right here this matplotlib graph and what I've done is created some radio buttons where you can switch so this is this red is the S&P 500 this blue is the Russell 2000 and as you can see the S&P 500 has done amazing um, while the Russell 2000 kind of has capped out so we go to the yield curve and this tends to have an inverse uh, proportion, you know, inverse relationship. So as the yield curve goes up, the stock market goes down. Um, don't really know if it's cause and effect, so I don't recommend an investment strategy off of that. And then we added Bitcoin. So uh, this is, you know, make sure you're looking at the, the right y axis. So this is Bitcoin hitting uh, 64,000. And matplotlib has some cool stuff right here. So we can pan through the axis if we want to, um, but we're limited by the data that we have. We can zoom, right? But matplotlib is essentially a uh, kind of a static, hard program data sheet. Um, and so matplotlib is great. But after talking to a professional Python programmer who did data visualizations for actual clients and customers in production, um, he told me about a, a better library, um, one that's more current with the industry, and it's called Dash by Plotly. So what I did was created a basic introduction script um, that allows you some interactivity with some stock data. So let's check that out now. But first, welcome to the 153rd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. And so please subscri consider subscribing to my channel. Only about 5% of my subscribers uh, make up my view time. The rest of them are non-subscribers. So if you're watching this, please subscribe. It helps me. And so let's check out what I've created and then we'll go through the code. So what this is going to do is create a, uh, a basically a website on my local machine. So if you've seen any of my Flask videos, it'll be very similar. So, and right now we're going to get an error because I didn't uh, fully develop this because, you know, this is just for an experiment. So I'm going to get this uh, callback failure because there is nothing... We have not entered a symbol yet, and I can enter a default symbol and maybe clear that error in the future. And so, just resizing my face. So what we can do, and you can see I've already tested this, but we can put in Apple. And on my local machine, it's going to uh, reset in front of you. So I have uh, Apple. Let's do this again. All right. There we go. And we have very similar, so you can download this plot as a picture. You can zoom in on it. You can pan on it, zoom in, zoom out, auto scale it. And so, but what this is doing is it's creating an HTML version of your data visualization. And this is really useful, right? Because with matplotlib, it's running on your local machine where, and right now we have a local server, but you can put this into production on like a cloud server and uh, this is more in line with kind of the project I had 
where I would like to have a economic website that constantly streams live data. So um, on the data visualization page, I will probably use Dash. And so let's check out um, how to create this in the code. Now, I'll be honest, this looks like every single Dash tutorial that you'll find. So I have nobody to specifically give credit to because it's um, a lot of people. Um, so first we're going to import Dash. You can simply, uh, you will have to pip install this. Or if you are using PyCharm, you can go to settings, your interpreter, click this, and then it's just Dash nothing else and then install the package mine installed fine with no errors um, then from the import core components as DCC HTML components as HTML then from the dash dot dependencies import input and output and that's how we were able to get some interactivity um, then you'll want to import the alpha vantage library as well so um, you, you can go to settings, Python interpreter, and uh, so alpha, I think it's Vantage, all one word. Yeah, so it's Alpha Vantage API. And then from that Alpha Vantage dot time series, import time series. Now this one, if you're not a long time subscriber to my channel, um, since I have a YouTube, I put all my keys in my own file. Don't copy and paste this. So from keys, import my API key. And I'll show you where to insert it yourself if you're watching this video and gonna copy it. But don't import this, okay? So first we're gonna create an instance of this app. So app equals dash dot capital dash and then call it. And then what you're going to do is kind of basically build your HTML. So app.layout equals HTML.capital div. So if you know HTML, you know what a div is. So children equals square bracket HTML.div children. And then you have this multi-line comment called symbol to graph. Doc DCC, right? We imported that here. Dot input. ID equals input, value equals blank, type equals text. And what we're doing is creating that small little, um, that small little uh, box in the upper left where you saw me type in Apple and IBM. And then we also want a graph. So HTML div ID equals output graph. Um, so, so let me just show you what all that means real quick. Because not everybody knows HTML as well. Okay, so it's going to call this local. So this is where it says symbol to graph. And then it has an input. So if we do Apple, now what we can do is press F12. Um, I am on the uh, edge right now. Oh, I hate edge so bad. Uh, but anyways, you go to elements. And what we have here is the HTML, and it's all JavaScript from Plotly, okay? But what it's doing is it's automatically creating this uh, graph for you, and right here as well. So it's not, it's using HTML kind of, but what it's really doing is creating a uh, JavaScript uh point right here so if you thought we were just building an HTML uh, page maybe like flask then that's not really what we're doing then we have this right here and this is what creates the interactivity so app dot callback so we set up the app here then we're gonna call this so the output is the output graph right which is right here the component property that's what's up here is the children and then input is going to be down here. So the component ID is input. So it's going to find this right here. And then the component property is value. So whatever we type in here will be pushed into here. Now we're going to update that value, right? This is a function. 
and then we're going to do input data and the input data is what we get from the input so this is where we're going to use the alpha vantage api key so if you just do dash tutorial what's probably going to happen is you'll find an old video maybe from sentdex uh, who's one of the most popular Python programs. Anyways, they're using the old school pandas.webreader. That's deprecated and it doesn't work. Um, you can make it work for Yahoo and you just have to include some headers and it uses requests and um, I didn't want to do all that. So since I already have an alpha vantage API key, um, what you can do is just uh, use this right here. So TS equals time series key equals alpha vantage api key and like i said this is because i run a youtube so if you um you can just pass in the api key directly if you have an alpha vantage api key so your api key numbers all right so that's how you do that we're not going to do that so i keep all of my uh API keys separate because I have this YouTube video. So the output format that we want, output underscore format is pandas because we're going to use a pandas file. The data and the metadata equals ts.getDailyAdjusted. The symbol is this input data, right? Whatever we put into that little input box. And the output size is compact. Compact is just the amount of columns and uh, rows it gets. Then our data frame, that's df equals data. The metadata is just um, good information that you get from the alpha vantage, but it has nothing to do with the data we need. Um, but you can print that metadata uh, like this if you want to see that, um, what's in it. Um, I don't want to. Then we're going to reset the index. And then we're going to set the index for the date. The date is the very first column um, in the web reader tutorials you might see. It might show date on there and you'll get an error. So when you look at the alpha vantage API key, and I think we can uh, just look it up. Alpha vantage API key, or a, let's do alpha vantage time series JSON. So let's look at the Alpha Vantage API documentation. All right, let's go to uh, Daily Adjusted, I believe we're using. And then it says examples, click for JSON output. So we're in the Alpha Vantage.co documentation. And you click on that. And so what you're getting is two things, right? Metadata and time series. So I want this, the date. So that's what this one is. And then I want the close to be the closing data. So if we go to here, four dot space close is the close, right? So it, IBM, I think this is closed at 140 and one cent. So the data frame is four dot close. So when we update the value, we want to return the DCC dot graph the ID is example graph. The figure, then we're going to pass it into brackets. The data equals, now the X axis is our index. And we set that to be the date. The Y axis is going to be this close right here. Then we want it to be a line, but if we wanted to create this a bar or a bubble. And then the name is going to be the input data. So that is the stock symbol. Then square bracket, right? Data is the first. This is a uh, dictionary that we're creating. So then the layout is just going to have the title and the input data. And then you close this layout. You close this figure. And then you close the whole graph. So if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore equals main. So this is the code to start the server. So app.run.underscore.server debug equals true. And what that means is uh, the debug is on here. All right. So that is the code. It's um, 
not very simple if you're new to Python, but um, this is familiar if you're if you're familiar with a little bit of HTML. All right, so very simple. I'm probably going to add on to this in future videos. So again, please subscribe or consider subscribing to my channel. But let's run this again one last time so you can see what we have talked about in this video. So, okay. So this symbol to graph, like I said, is this input. Um, this right here, this input. Um, let's close that and go to edge. Then when we go to Apple, see this up here? This automatically changed when we put the title is input data. And the input data right now is Apple. Then this is the X axis, which is the date. This is the Y axis, which is the closing price. And then it knows to... Uh, update so switch to IBM and I can change this to dot upper um, right here to make this bigger I mean uppercase if I wanted to uh, again the closing price and I like this a lot this is what another one matplotlib doesn't like this is what you see in like Yahoo Finance where you can click on the dates all right so I hope you enjoyed this video um, please subscribe, consider subscribing to my channel. I can't say that word for some reason. And uh, like this video and leave a comment if you've used Dash before, uh, especially if you have some cool projects to show. All right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.